This is TCI Matter, page 7. Hundreds of brightly colored glass tubes of light flash on and off in quick succession. Their blinking promises that a trip on this thrilling carnival ride will be worth the wait in line. As you wait, you may wonder, what are the red neon lights made of? Neon lights are glass tubes filled with trillions and trillions of tiny particles. These tiny particles are far too small to be seen, and within a single tube, there are too many particles to count. When the electricity is off, the tube looks empty. You cannot see evidence that there are particles in the glass tube. When electricity runs through the glass tube, the particles glow, and you see the bright red color of neon lights. But if you took a glass tube of air and ran electricity through it, you would not see a similar glow. Why do neon lights glow red? In this lesson, you will begin to learn about the particles of matter and the 92 types of particles that make up the natural world. These particles are so small that they are on a scale that you cannot observe with your eyes. So, scientists and engineers have developed methods to observe them. These tools, along with other experiments, allow people to categorize the unique particles that make up the world. Section 1, page 8, Atoms. Suppose you had an iron nail and you sawed it in half. Then you took one of the halves and divided it in half again. What is the smallest size piece an iron nail could be broken into? If you kept dividing the iron nail in half, you would eventually end up with a single particle of iron. You would end up with a particle of matter. Everything in the world is made of particles of matter. For instance, anything made of iron is made of particles of iron. Aluminum foil used in cooking and baking is made of particles of aluminum. And neon lights are full of gas made of particles of neon. Even objects that you cannot see are made of particles of matter. The air that you breathe is made of a mixture of mostly nitrogen and oxygen particles. Though everything in the world is made of particles of matter, not everything is made of the same kind of particles. Each unique particle is a fundamental building block of a type of matter called an element. Gold, aluminum, oxygen, and neon are all different elements. An individual particle of an element is called an atom. Every object in the world around you is made of atoms of different elements. Iron nails are made of atoms of the element iron. The oxygen you breathe is made of atoms of oxygen. Diamonds are made of atoms of carbon. The graphite in your pencils is also made of atoms of carbon. Iron, oxygen, and carbon are three of the 92 different elements that occur naturally in the world. All of these different elements combine in different ways to form the millions of different substances that surround you. Though atoms make up everything around you, you have never seen one. All atoms are too small to be seen. Even if you used a magnifying glass, you would not be able to see an atom. Just how small is an atom? Suppose you had a grain of sand in your hand. That grain of sand may appear tiny, but it contains about 50 quintillion atoms. That's a five with 19 zeros. When you hold a tiny grain of sand, you are actually carrying that many atoms between your fingers. To understand how many atoms that is, suppose you expanded each atom to the size of a ping pong ball. With 50 quintillion ping pong balls, you could fill the Grand Canyon 500,000 times. Atoms are so small that scientists use a unique scale or category of size to think about them. People are on one scale because they are all about the same size. Likewise, continents are on one scale because they are about the same size. However, people and continents are not on the same scale since a person is much smaller than a continent. Scales are often described by the units used in that scale. If you were describing hair growth, you might use the scale of centimeters, but you would not use centimeters to measure the distance between Los Angeles and New York. Instead, you would use a larger unit, such as the kilometer, or we might use a mile. Likewise, atoms are on a different scale, called the atomic scale. 
scientists often use the unit picometer to describe the size of atoms. Picometers are 10 to the negative 12th meters long, which means there are 1 trillion picometers in one meter. If atoms are so small, what tools can we use to see them?